a Jesus kid, I'm a Jesus kid, I believe the good news, so I'm a Jesus kid, a Jesus kid, I'm a Jesus kid, God can use me too, cause I'm a Jesus kid, a Jesus kid. and girls, Pastor Steve here. Welcome to Kids Church. Today, boys and girls, we're going to be continuing in our series, Sowing to the Spirit, and reviewing our theme verse from Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8. And don't forget, if you want to be a part of our Bible study, have your mommies and daddies send me a video of you reading our theme verse from Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8. God bless you guys. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Well, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, and whatever things are of good report, if there is a, any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy. Meditating on these things. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. Galatians 6, 8. Well, hi, boys and girls. Are you ready to continue learning about sowing to the Spirit? Do you have your Bibles with you? Good. Well, do you remember what our memory verse was? Let's look at it one more time. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 8, it says, For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. Well, boys and girls, before we get into our study and we talk about this memory verse, 
Let's take a moment and let's bow our heads and let's close our eyes and let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for today. We thank you, Lord, for giving us another opportunity, Lord, to come before you, to open up your word, Lord, and to learn of you. We pray right now, Lord, that all of our distractions would be put away and that our hearts and our ears, Lord, would be focused on what you have to tell us today. Jesus, we thank you for loving us. We thank you for providing for us. We thank you for protecting us. We thank you, Lord, for always going before us. Bless our time now in your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, boys and girls, as we look at our memory verse today, Galatians chapter 6 and verse 8, it starts off with, He who sows to the flesh. Do you remember what the word sow means? Yeah, the word sow means to place seeds in the ground for a future harvest, to plant something. And when Paul is telling us about sowing to the flesh, he's telling us to focusing or planting or spending a lot of time on things that are temporary, on the things of this world. And what he tells us is that if we spend all of this time sowing to the things of this world, we're going to reap corruption. Now, this word corruption, it means separation from God for all of eternity. Boys and girls, for all of eternity, if we're separated from God, where are we? That's right, we're in hell. And none of us, I know, want to be in hell. We want to spend forever. We want to spend eternity with Jesus in heaven. And that's what Paul tells us in the second part of this verse. He says, but he who sows to the Spirit, he who does the things that, that are after God, the things of the Lord, he tells us that we are going to reap ever lasting life. Remember that word reap means to harvest or to receive. And he's telling us if we do the things of God here on this earth, we're going to receive eternal life with God in heaven forever and ever and ever. And so boys and girls, we are learning about sowing to the Spirit. And here in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 8, we're encouraged to do the things of God, to plant those seeds of the Spirit in our own lives. If we continue, we look at the scripture, Paul tells us again in Romans chapter 6 and verse 13, he says, And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead, as your members, as instruments of righteousness to God. This word right here, boys and girls, this word present, it means to yield yourselves or to give yourselves over freely. And so we have a, we have a choice in this passage of scripture. Paul is telling us, we have two ways that we're to present ourselves. One is to present ourselves as instruments of unrighteousness to sin. And what is the second way that we can present ourselves or we can yield ourselves? Well, according to Romans 6, 13, it's as instruments of righteousness to God. And so boys and girls, Paul is telling us we have a choice we can either take our bodies and present our bodies and do those things that are in the ways of the world or against God, or we can do the things that are right in the eyes of the Lord. Paul tells us again, if we continue reading in Romans chapter 6 and in verse 16, he says this, he says, do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, 
you are that one slaves whom you obey, whether it's of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. Now, boys and girls, what does it mean to obey? What do you think it means to do what someone tells you to do, to comply with the rules, to submit to what is being told? And this is what Paul is telling us. He's telling us that we can either present ourselves as slaves leading to death, eternal separation from God, or we can present ourselves to God, doing those things that are right in his eyes. Let me ask you this. How many of you want to be slaves to sin? I sure don't, and I hope that none of you want to either. How many of you want to be obedient to God? I do, and I pray that each of you desire to be obedient to God as well. The Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12, it says, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The writer of Hebrews, boys and girls, is telling us the importance of God's word. Do you know, boys and girls, that it is the word of God that feeds our spirit? Do you know that if our mind is on the word of God, if we are reading the Bible and listening to the word of God being taught, then that focuses our heart and our mind on him. Do you know, boys and girls, that when we do that, we are sowing to the spirit? And boys and girls, as we feed our spirit, as we feed our spirit the word of God, we are going to reap of the spirit. And boys and girls, isn't that what we want? Don't we want to reap those things that are good? Those things that will give us everlasting life? Well, boys and girls, in order to reap of the Spirit, we have to make sure that we're planting and sowing the right things into our lives. In last week's study, boys and girls, we talked about planting things. And in our study last week, we compared our own hearts to a field. And that field, boys and girls, it's important that we plant good things into our hearts. Now, boys and girls, if we want to plant good things in our hearts, we have to make sure that we're taking in good things. But what happens if we plant weeds into our heart, boys and girls? What do you think is going to grow? That's right, weeds are gonna grow. If we plant weeds, boys and girls, we're going to reap or we're going to harvest weeds. And so let me ask you, boys and girls, if we sow bad things, what will come from it? That's right, bad things. Well, if we sow or plant good things, what's gonna come from it? That's right, good things. And so it's important, boys and girls, that if we want good things to come from our lives, we need to make sure that we're planting good things into our lives. Boys and girls, that's why it's important to spend time in God's word reading it. That's why it's important to spend time listening to God's word being taught. Because as you do that, Seeds, good seeds are being planted into your heart and into your mind. Now, boys and girls, I want you to look at your screen 
And there are some words that are coming up on your screen right now. And we're going to take a look at each of these words. And we're going to decide together whether they are bad seeds or whether they're good seeds. And if they're a bad seed, boys and girls, we're going to put the letter B right next to it. And if it's a good seed, we're going to put the letter G right next to it. And so let's look at what type of seeds we should be planting in our lives. Should we be planting anger, boys and girls? Is that a bad seed or a good seed? That's right, it's a bad seed. What about kindness? Yeah, that's a good seed. Patience. That's a good seed. What about jealousy? That's a bad seed. Hatred. That's right, bad. What about vengeance? Bad. What about love? That's good. Forgiveness. Yeah, that's good. What about stealing? Bad. Sharing? Yes, that's good. What about bad language and untrustworthy? Yeah, those are both bad seeds. What about truth and joy? Yeah, those are things that I want coming from my life. Those are good seeds. What about lies? No, those are bad. What about mercy? Yes, that is good. Boys and girls, it's important for us to make sure that we're planting good seeds into our lives. If we want to harvest and reap good things, boys and girls, we need to make sure that what we're putting in is good as well. The Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, he says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Boys and girls, in this passage of scripture, what is the apostle Paul encouraging us to do? He's encouraging us to present our bodies to God, to do those things that God wants to do with our lives. And he tells us something very important here. He uses a very big word. He uses the word conformed. He tells us not to be conformed. And do you know, boys and girls, what the word conformed means? It's a big word. The word conformed, it means to yield your own way of doing things for another way of doing things or to submit to what the group wants to be done, whether it's right or wrong or to adjust the way we do things or to change the way we think to another way of thinking. The Apostle Paul is telling us to present ourselves to God, to do those things that God wants to do with our lives. But he's telling us also, he says, don't be conformed to the things of the world. Don't change your mind. Don't change your way of thinking. Don't adjust to the way that the world does things. Do the things that God wants to do in your lives. And how can we do that, boys and girls? Considering everything that we've been learning so far, how can we present our bodies to God? How can we sow to the Spirit? By spending time reading God's Word, by giving myself over to obeying God, to continually sow to the Spirit. You see, boys and girls, 
our memory verse in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 8, it says, For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. So we have a choice. We have a choice to do and to obey the things of this world. But if we do that, we're told what we're going to reap. We're told what we're going to receive. And that is corruption. Eternity separated from God. He says, but he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. The other choice, the other option that you have, boys and girls, is to sow to the Spirit, to do those things that God has commanded us to do, to obey God. And when we do that, boys and girls, we're promised those things that we're going to reap, it's going to be a blessing. We're going to reap everlasting life. Boys and girls, it's your choice. Do you want to obey the world or do you want to obey God? Well, hello, boys and girls. It's Robert Einstein here, and I hope you're enjoying the lesson so far. Let's go ahead and get started with our first activity, connect the dots. All right, children, are you ready? Let's start with number one, and two, and three, and so on and so forth. And as we go along, we'll see what we are making out here. Hmm, what is that smiley face we're passing? Yes. Okay. Can anybody guess what we're working on here? Hmm, that looks like uh, an N, yes, that's an N, excellent. And an O, ah, I know, it's noble, the word is noble. Excellent, yes, and that reminds me of our memory verse, Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatsoever things are noble. Yes, and here is Pastor Steve, who will lead us in a little bit more information on nobility. Hi boys and girls, let's review our theme verse from Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8. Can you read it with me? Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report. If there is any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Great job, everyone. Well, last week, boys and girls, we looked at what it means to meditate on things that are true. Who do we know that is true? That's right, Jesus. Well, today, boys and girls, we're going to look at the word noble. Noble is one of those things that we should be meditating on. Do you know what noble means? Noble means things that are excellent or outstanding or great. Let's talk about, boys and girls, about meditating on things that are noble. The Bible tells us in Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 and 2, it says, If you then were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is, at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above not on things on the earth. Now, boys and girls, Paul, who wrote the book of Colossians, also is telling us something very important. He's telling us that we are to seek something. What are we to seek? We're to seek those things which are above. 
where Christ is. Now, boys and girls, we're told to set our minds on things above. Now, we're told to seek. We're told to put our mind on the things that are above where Christ is. But what does it mean to seek? Let's answer that question. What do you think it means to seek, boys and girls? I can't hear you. What do you think it means? That's right. To seek means to search after or to desire or to look at something very closely. Or in this passage of scripture, it means to want something with all of your heart. Now that we know what it means to seek, boys and girls, I got a very important question for you. How then are we to live? Are we to live after God's desires? Or are we to live after our own desires? Now, I can't answer that question for you, but I know for me, boys and girls, I want to live for God's desires. Boys and girls, we are to seek and to meditate on those things which are noble, which are outstanding, which are excellent, which are great. What do you think, boys and girls, are things that are noble? Well, I know someone who's noble. Jesus is noble. He is great. Boys and girls, you know what else is great and outstanding? Everything that God has created. Have you walked outside and just took a moment to look at what God has created for you and for me to enjoy? Have you looked about the sky and seen just how beautifully blue the sky is? And how pretty the clouds are? And how fluffy and white? Do you know that God made those things? Have you been outside and seen a bird fly by? And just stood in amazement how wonderful God's creation is. Boys and girls, the Bible tells us to seek after, to search for, to look for those things. So that way we can meditate on them. And remember, meditate means to think about very, very carefully over and over and over again. And boys and girls, when we take our minds and we meditate on those things that are true and those things that are noble, it puts our minds right back onto Christ. And when we remember who Christ is, boys and girls, it changes everything. It changes how we think. It changes how we act. It changes how we live, it changes how we treat others. Because boys and girls, we are now planting good seeds into our life. And when we love others and we treat others right, boys and girls, that's the fruit, that's the harvest, those are the things that we're reaping from the seeds that we have planted. Boys and girls, I want you to do something. I want you to, when we're done, to grab a piece of paper and to grab something to write with. And I want you to take a moment and to write down some ways that you can meditate on things that are noble. Boys and girls, sow to the Spirit. Because when you sow to the Spirit, the Bible promises us everlasting life. Let's pray right now and ask God to help us sow to the Spirit. And let's meditate, boys and girls, as we're praying and thinking about things 
that are true and things that are noble. Dear Jesus, we thank you again, Lord, for the time, God, that you've given to us to come before you, to open up your word. And Lord, as we are studying on sowing to the Spirit, Lord, we thank you, God, that we're able to right now plant good seeds into our hearts. And Lord, just pray, Father, for each of these boys and girls, Lord, that they would take care of their hearts, Father, that they would tend it, Lord, that they would continue watering these seeds, Father, so that they would continue to grow and to blossom, Father. And Lord, that they would see a great harvest, Father, that they would reap the benefits and the blessings of sowing to the Spirit. Lord, we thank you that we can meditate, Father, on things that are true, Lord. We thank you for telling us that you are not only the way, but you are the truth and you are the life. Lord, we thank you, God, that our minds can be fixed upon you, Lord, when we meditate on things that are noble, the things that are great and outstanding, Father, and are perfect, Lord. And we know, God, that you are perfect in all of your ways and that you are a great and powerful God. Lord, we thank you again for this opportunity to, to draw closer to you. Lord, may you continue to bless our lives. Bless each young man and young woman, Father, as they continue to sow to the Spirit. Go before us now, Lord Jesus. It's in your name we pray. Amen. All right, children. I hope you're enjoying the lesson so far. We have another activity for you. This is a word scramble. Who's ready? Okay, let's take a look here. Now these words are all scrambled together and we have to put them together to form the word. So let's take a look at the first one and let's see here. Yes, J-E-S-U-S. Jesus, excellent work. Is correct. The, very good. You're doing excellent, children. Way, very good. T-R-U-T-H Truth Very good. So Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Excellent, excellent children. Yes, that reminds me of John 14, 6. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Now let's take our number one and place it down at the bottom and we'll see what our final phrase is. We have number two, E, very good. Number three is S, excellent children. Yes, Jesus, what's the last word? Saves. Oh, you're so smart, children. Very good. Yes, Jesus saves. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And he saves us. We are saved by grace, children. Thank you so much for this lesson. We hope you have a wonderful time. And we'll see you next time.